All right, in this video, we're going to do the front pads and rotors on this Dodge Challenger. Uh, this is going to be the same for the model years listed in the description. Um, it's also going to be the same or very similar for all the trim models. Uh, this package here, uh, this is the same brake pads and rotors uh, as long as it's got the dual piston front caliper, which ours does. Uh, so that's going to apply to some V8 models as well. I don't think it applies to uh, the Hellcat or the Scat Pack, uh, but I believe anything under those, it's the same uh, rotors and pads, so it's the exact same process. Now with that being said, this one is the six cylinder and it is also the all wheel drive model. Uh, but again, uh, I said those rotors fit all models with the dual piston front caliper. So should be good to go there. Um, so it seems it doesn't matter whether you have the V6 or the V8, if it's a dual piston front caliper, as long as it's not a scat pack or a Hellcat, uh, it's gonna be the same process and the same parts. And also guys, any of the other years that is not listed in the title, it's gonna be extremely similar. Uh, the same could be said for Chrysler 300C and the Chargers, of course, as well. They're all pretty much the same cars. Uh, so this is going to be the front, like I said, but we're also doing the rear. So that'll be a separate video, but I'll put a link uh, in the description to that video. We'll have that one up a few days after this. So as soon as it's up, I'll put a link for the rear in the description if you want to check that out as well. People generally ask me uh, where I get these. These are by a company called Break Motive on eBay. I'm not affiliated or sponsored or anything. Hoping to be soon because I've been buying their uh, pads and rotors for well over a decade and put them on all my vehicles. Uh, but anyways, that's what these are here, guys. If you want to get yourself a set, uh, Brake Motive on eBay. All right, so before we get the car up on jack stands, we're going to go ahead and loosen each lug nut a half turn. So with the car secure, you can finish taking off your lug nuts and pull the wheel off. Now, if you were just doing pads, you could just take this bolt off here and the lower one and then just pop the caliper off and switch out your pads. But since we're doing the rotor as well, we're going to have to take uh, this bracket off as well. Now, a lot of people at this point, they would go ahead and take these out anyways so that they can service these slide pins and uh, you can re-grease them with that brake component grease. I usually have it for sale at the front desk of any auto parts store, so you can do that if you wish. Also, sometimes it's easier to get the pads in and out if you separate the caliper from the bracket, uh, but I usually just take the thing off as a whole and do it that way. So there's the two big bolts on the back. I'll just keep up. One there and then one on the bottom that matches as well. You'll see it'll go into this bracket here. Uh, mine were super, super tight and all the way out they were super tight. They had this yellow thread locker on it. So that sucked and it took me a while and I couldn't get my impact in there either. So I just had to do it old fashioned breaker bar at first and then a really big ratchet. Uh, so it's finally free. Hopefully yours won't be that bad. I don't know if somebody did that intentional or if it came from the factory that way or what. Uh, so now you can just slide this off. Uh, if it sticks, you can stick a big uh, screwdriver down in here and pry back top and bottom so that it'll separate from the rotor, especially if you have a deep groove. A lot of times it'll hang up, but it'll just slide off like so. And you don't want to leave it hanging from your brake hose here. You could damage it and give yourself problems there. So have a brick or a block or something like this to set it on so it's not hanging from the line. And then your rotor will come off. A lot of times they stick. As you can see, mine just came right off. Uh, but if they stick, you're gonna have to uh, smack around on it some with a little mini sledgehammer or something to break it free. And that crap right in there is why they stick. They'll rust and cease and get stuck on there and they don't wanna come off. So also a good idea to put the appropriate grease in here uh, for reassembly, just a small amount because you don't want it slinging on your new rotor. I'm going to go ahead and pop this front facing pad out. That way I can get my C-clamp in here to push these pistons back in. I'll show you that in a minute. So you want to leave that uh, back pad in place for doing that. So go ahead and pop this out. Just give it a whack here and there with a screwdriver and a hammer. All right, cancel that. Mine is not wanting to move whatsoever. And I think it's actually because there's uh, catching on a lip down there. I've never had that occur before in any other vehicle. But I think that's what's going on here. Uh, so we're just going to mount it back up. That way I can separate the caliper from the bracket after all. Okay, so these are really tight too. And you know what else is awesome? So this is a half inch and you got to hold this in place because the whole thing turns so you can't get your pin out. 
I've also never seen that before, I don't believe. Usually you just unbolt the pin and pull it out. But this one you got a lock here, and the cool part is it's an 18 millimeter, which most toolkits do not include. So you got a half inch here and 18 millimeter on here. You gotta hold that still while you break that loose or the whole thing spins and you can't get it out. And that would be why this one was tight too. Not only would you got green crap on there, green thread locker or, or whatnot, but you can see that yellow goop on there too. So uh, that, is, that ain't supposed to be on there, guys. Somebody was a real dip. Yeah. You shouldn't have two separate thread lockers on here. And uh, you certainly shouldn't have that much gooped on there. That's way too much of that yellow stuff there. Not to mention, I have never ever used thread locker on brake components. You just torque them to what they're supposed to be torqued to, and then you won't have anything to worry about. There's the bottom one, so my guess is the green is probably what the factory put on there, which is fine. It's a very light amount, and it's not that strong. This yellow crap that's fighting me is somebody else put on there on the last brake change, and they put way too much. At least that's what I'm guessing, because I ain't never had to fight brake bolts like this before. This is ridiculous. Usually there's nothing on them. All right, and now this thing is sticking, so I pried here and broke it free from that pad. Uh, but this rear pad is sticking to the piston, so it's not wanting to let this come out. So i got to tap around and pry on a few different places to try to break this free. All right, so in the process of hitting this rear pad from the back with a screwdriver and a hammer, trying to separate it from this piston uh, this thing managed to pop off and now you can actually see what's going on here it is seized to the pistons it won't come off you can even see there it was pulling this piston out it's out further than the other side from me hitting hitting it with the the screwdriver against it and then with the hammer trying to break this break it free from the piston it's pulling the piston out that is ridiculous again something i've not run into yet but now with this thing popped off of here, I'll be able to hit it real good with my mini sledge here and pop that freaking pad off of there. This is ridiculous. All right, so I, I had to hit it hard several times with that sledge. And it's got, it's like somebody literally super glued it onto there. And you can see here it even started pulling and bending whatever this little metal cap is here. I want to say somebody intentionally sabotaged this. It literally like it was super glued on here. This stuff's tacky and I could hear it. As I was hitting it, it started coming off more and more and more and it was making a sound. I think somebody literally super glued this pad onto the pistons there. So anyways, make sure you pay attention to the orientation of your pads. Um, sometimes they got a little tang down here that'll kind of hold them in place. Gotta see if we got something like that going on here. But other than that, they'll just push out or pull out. There you go. Yeah, there's those little tabs I was talking about. I think that one's that's in the right spot. So then you can just slide the new pad in, and then the rear works similar or the same. All right, so now that the thing's not glued on there anymore, you can put it back in place uh, temporarily so you can hook up your C-clamp like this, and you're going to turn it and push your pistons in. You have to go, you either use two at a time, or you have to go back, well, regardless, you go back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to push one down all the way and then the other one. Do each one a little at a time going back and forth, whether you're using one or two. And then you're going to need to come up here before you start doing that. Pop this cover off so you can get access to your brake uh, fluid reservoir there. Take the cap off so it'll be easier to push the pistons in and it'll let uh, the fluid come up and the air out of the system that way. So both of them are in all the way. Should look something like that. Just turn them in until they stop. Um, they should go in pretty easy. If they fight you, then it's time for a new caliper. These ones went in super easy. Uh, so now to get your uh, bracket off of here. So we can do the new rotor. And then we'll throw this back over. Get it bolted up. Um, set the pads in it. And then slide the caliper over. I'll show all that in a second. All right, so you, there you can see the new rotor. I went ahead and tightened down this bracket. These are 70 foot-pounds of torque for the bracket. Uh, don't touch the rotor anywhere on the surface that the pads touch, front or back. If you're gonna get grease anywhere by the face here, you don't wanna get anything on here or your brakes will smoke and slip. Um, now, a lot of the ones from the auto parts store that come with this sticky, oily film on it, it's for storage. Um, if you have brakes with that on it 
you're gonna need a brake parts cleaner and get all that off of there or your brakes will not work uh, but these come zinc plated uh, so they don't rust naturally um, and so it doesn't have any of that so I don't have to worry about that with these but definitely check if you got that tacky sticky surface you got to get that off of there with brake parts cleaner so you need to inspect your pads here for these little squealer things so this is what hits your rotor when you're almost out of pad it gives you that light squealing sound it tells you time to change your pads some sets only come with a uh, squealer for one pad on each side this comes with it on all of them but if you have a set where it's only got it for one pad on each side then you're going to want to put that one on the rear because generally the the rear will wear a little faster because that's where most of the pressure is coming from all right so before you stick them in check all those little metal tabs and whatnot make sure it's not touching your rotor but that will also require you pushing this on here flush where it will set to check it of course you can check it again when you're done um, but this is how they go so you slide it in from the rear and the front like i said make sure nothing's caught up dragging nothing like that and uh obviously don't touch the surface of your pads with dirty hands okay so then your calipers just slide right over if it doesn't you might have to wiggle this squeeze it and all that these could shift on you uh, but if your pistons are in all the way then it should slide right over as long as everything's lined up right then you can reinstall your caliper bolts there and torque spec on these are 44 foot pounds of torque and remember you got to hold that still while you torque it down and again if you did want to service these slide pins and re-grease them um, they'll just pull out so you got that little rubber boot there you want to be careful not to rip that boot so you kind of try to pop that boot off get it started uh, before you slide that out and you, the whole pin will come out and then you can grease it at that point if you want stick it back in make sure the boot doesn't get crumpled and all that but that's all there is to uh, servicing those. All right, so once everything's torqued down, you can get your wheel thrown back on there and get those lug nuts snug down in the air there. And then what I like to do is drop just the bare minimum. They're already snug down a little bit, as much as I could do in the air because the tire's spinning on me. But I lower it just enough to get just enough weight on it to where I can get my torque specs on it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't even uh, torque the lug nuts, but that's part of how you avoid a warped rotor because a warped rotor is actually uh, the wheel being on there cockeyed. It's not from the brakes getting too hot. They're designed to be extremely hot, so that is not what warps rotors. Uh, so that's why I always uh, push for proper torque spec on putting the wheel back on. So uh, you want to do that in a crisscross pattern. You never go from one to the next one right next to it. You want to do a crisscross pattern. It's real easy with a five lug pattern like this. You'll just make a star pattern like this. So don't go torque, torque, torque. You want to go in a crisscross pattern, star pattern on a five lug. Okay. And the torque specs for this thing, they are all over the place depending on what, from what I found, depending on what challenger you have. Uh, some of them say it literally says 80 to 115 foot pounds of torque. Some of them say specifically 80 foot pounds. Some of them specifically say 110. Some of them specifically say 85. Um, I always just generically do 100 foot pounds of torque pretty much for anything unless it's like a big truck or something like that. I always go 100 uh, and I've never had any issue with that. So, uh, But if you want the exact spec, you're going to want to refer to your owner's manual there. All right, but then after that, so you repeat the same on the other side, obviously. Get your cap back on here. Never hurts to uh, check your fluid level there, obviously. And what you're going to want to do here, now there's a gap between your pads and the, the pistons and the caliper and all that. So you want to get in, start it, uh, push the pedal lightly if you got to push the pedal to start it. I don't think you have to on this one. Anyways start it if you do push the pedal to start it press it very lightly as l as little as possible start it up and then what you want to do with the brake pedal um, just press it lightly and very slowly press it down just do that over and over really slowly with your foot uh, no more than halfway down just light steady pressure bring it back up light steady pressure and what that's going to do it's going to push those pistons out to where they make contact with the pads and then the pads are going to make contact with the rotor and then your brakes will be good to go. If you just take off as is, uh, your pedal is going to go to the floor. Also, if you do that, uh, you could trick the ABS system into thinking you have a uh, leak and it could shut off uh, your front brakes. So don't do that. Do it nice and slow, like I said. And that's it. Again, link in the description for the rear uh, when that's up. So... Uh, if this video helped you out, be sure to hit the like button for me. If it saved you money over going to uh, shop, please uh, consider hitting the thanks button under the video. But uh, I want to thank you for watching, 
and uh, hopefully I'll see you around.